there, fellow explorers. Today, we're going to talk about going to Yellowstone National Park. One of our very favorite places. We're going to tell you where we like to go, where we like to stay. Favorite attractions to see. And we're even going to give you some tips to save a little bit of money. Who doesn't love that? Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Where are they going? What all they see? It's J and T exploring. So for those of you who don't know, what is Yellowstone National Park? It is actually the first national park that ever existed. It's actually a giant caldera of a volcano, which means there's tons of geothermal activity all throughout the park, which is super cool. So that's one of the coolest things about visiting Yellowstone is when you go, you get to see such a huge mix of alpine lakes and forests, and then suddenly there's a geyser and a hot pot, and it's such a unique and interesting place to visit. Not to mention so Yellowstone National Park is sort of set up in two loops. There's the upper loop and the lower loop when you're visiting the park. So what we're gonna do is sort of talk you through our route that we take when we visit the park and things that we love to do. So we like to start the day in West Yellowstone. For us, it's the easiest entrance. Um, and then that takes us right into Madison, which is a really great spot to stop and look for animals sometimes. We've seen elk there. We just saw a bear with two cubs. It yeah, was so cool. In the river. Yeah. Oh. So once you've driven through Madison, you get to Madison Junction and we always turn right. right. And from there, that'll take you to the lower Geyser Basin. Um, you'll usually see a lot of buffalo on your way there in the middle of the road, typically. So in the lower Geyser Basin, there are fountain paint pots, which is usually our first like yeah. official stop usually the first walk we go get out on is fountain pain pods it's a cool unique walk there's a lot of bobby sock trees at that specific one so th what that means is the tree that because of the geothermal activity and the hot water down at the bottom the tree is actually like dead and the bottom is all bleached white so the rest of the tree is like a dark brown or a black and then the rest is just like white so there's a lot of those at Fountain Paint Pots, which is a really cool feature when you're just pulling up and you park your car. It's a beautiful walk with a few geysers, nice hot pots, beautiful pools right by the side of the road. And it sort of overlooks the valley next to it. So you get sort of a good view of like the sweeping vista of Yellowstone. And like Jamie said, there's usually bison in that valley. So it's fun to watch the herds move. So continuing to the right, once you leave Fountain Paint Pots, the next one that you're going to come to is Midway Geyser Basin, and that's where Grand Prismatic is. If you know anything about Yellowstone, you know that is the place to be. Yeah, Grand Prismatic is probably the most famous hot pot in Yellowstone. It's the one that you see the pictures of from an aerial view where it has all the crazy colors coming out of it. That's not what you're going to see when you go to Midway Geyser Basin, though. Yeah. It's hard to see all of the colors from the angle that you're at because when you go on the walk there, you're right at the level of it. So it's hard to see. But just past the Midway Geyser Basin walk, there's also a parking lot for a hike to Fairy Falls. And that hike will also take you to the Overlook for Grand Prismatic. And that's where you get those stunning above views of the entire huge hot pot with all the colors spreading out. We just did that walk, and while we were walking towards the overlook, you, we could see the steam coming off of the uh, pool was like different color steam. It was really cool. Oh yeah, it was rainbow steam as we were walking past. I forgot about that. Yeah, I didn't. Oh my god, that was cool. <laughs> then going out of Grand Prismatic, again, we're going to go to the right because we're continuing on the loop. The next stop we like to take is called Biscuit Basin. Biscuit Basin is a smaller one and a lot of people skip it. Uh, there's not a ton to see at Biscuit Basin, but it's a nice little walk. We like to park there usually and that's like where we eat lunch sometimes, right next to the river. One time uh, when we were eating lunch, we saw like a family of otters swimming up the river. It was really cool. It was so cute. And usually there's a lot of like cool birds to watch there. So it's a nice little area just to like rest for a second and a fun little walk. And then when you leave the parking lot for Biscuit, you're still gonna continue to the right following our loop. And the next thing you're gonna get to is Black Sand Basin. It's also another smaller geyser walk. Um, it's very like 
marsh slash wetlandy, mm -hmm. but it's really pretty and uh, you're really close to the mountain right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right next to like the forest on the mountain. Uh, and it has black sand, which is why it's called Black Sand Basin, which is pretty cool to look at. Yeah. If you're enjoying this video, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button to help us make even more content. And if we leave and we turn right from Black Sand Basin, maybe like 10 feet away is the Upper Geyser Basin, which is home to... Old Faithful! Probably the most famous geyser in the all you of Yellowstone. Know, yeah, the reason you know Yellowstone. Yeah, you've seen the picture of Old Faithful going off. It's probably the reason you're planning a vacation. It's because you thought, I want to see Old Faithful. And it's definitely worth going to see. Yeah. I love Old Faithful. And it's nice because a lot of the geysers in the park are sort of sporadic and you don't know when they're going to go off. But Old Faithful is pretty reliable, hence the name. Also, it's nice because... If you are there and you still have like an hour and a half before Old Faithful's gonna go, you can walk the like upper geyser basin and it is awesome. There's lots of really cool geothermal features all throughout that area. There's also, if you wanna take a break from walking around, there's a gift shop, there's, um, oh no, Old Faithful Inn. Um, which is absolutely beautiful. Old Faithful Lodge. There's a lot to do at Old Faithful. Old Faithful is one of the three places in Yellowstone that's pretty developed inside of the park. So while you're there, there's the lodges, there's a gas station, there's a general store if you need to get groceries, there's restaurants if you want to pick up something to eat. There's a brand new visitor center that they just built uh, right before one of our last visits. It's really good. But while you're in Yellowstone, I do feel like you have to go see Old Faithful. It's definitely a must. 100%. Go sit on the benches, wait for it to erupt. It's a great time. So then once you leave Old Faithful, you're gonna go to the right again. It's a little tricky because there's like that bridge there, but you're gonna go towards the right. And uh, the next thing you're gonna get to is Kepler Cascades. It's just a little pull off and like a wooden bridge that you can walk out and see the waterfall. It's really pretty. But if you don't wanna stop, you don't have to. Well, that's a good thing to know for a lot of Yellowstone. There are so many places to like, pull off and look at things. There's so many walks, there's so many waterfalls, there's so many geothermal features that like, if you're really on a time constraint, then definitely like look at a map, pick your favorite ones. Yeah. But also like, I mean, we have our favorites that we love to stop and look at that we're telling you about, but that's not everything on the map. And sometimes we'll just like find a new one, even though we've been there so many times. Yeah, so passing Kepler Cascades, the next thing you're gonna come to is the Continental Divide, which has Issa Lake, which is really pretty. It's like covered in water lily or lily pads. Um, and it's cool because you're at the Continental Divide. Yeah, Issa Lake is actually a really cool like geological feature because it is a lake on the Continental Divide. So half of the water from that lake will go to the Pacific Ocean and half of the water from that lake goes into the Atlantic Ocean. Right. So it's it's crazy to think about when you're there that like this water is splitting to opposite ends of the continent. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, so once you've hit the Continental Divide, you'll start going back downhill. And this is one of the few times where you turn left when you get to the junction. Then you'll see West Thumb Geyser Basin. This is my personal favorite. I, I love West Thumb. West Thumb is really pretty because there's a lot of hot pots and geothermal features, but you're also right on the bank of Yellowstone Lake, which is a huge alpine lake. So you get these sweeping vistas of lake and mountain next to these hot pots. It, it's such a cool place. Plus, there are literally always elk there. I will say, for West Thumb being such a big basin, I feel like a lot of people don't stop there. The parking lot is pretty easy to find a parking spot in nine times out of 10. And sometimes when we're on the boardwalks there, it feels like we're the only ones there. Yeah. But it's like Jamie said, one of my favorites, her personal favorite. Yeah. We're usually there like when it's starting to be a little bit dusky too. So just watching the sunset like kind of over the lake and I don't know, it's just pretty, I just love it. So then when you're leaving West Thumb, 
you're gonna take another right out of the parking lot and you're just gonna follow the lake around there will be trees in the way so you can't see the lake the whole time but it's a really pretty drive yes. and the next thing you're gonna get to is lake village which is our personal favorite place to stay yeah i love staying at lake i think it's such a good location especially if you're there for the scenery that sounds silly to say but like some people don't go to yellowstone for the scenery they want to like do the touristy things and like get out whereas we love to go to yellowstone to like unwind and like be surrounded by nature and see animals and the scenery so we love lake it's another place where there's a lot of like elk uh, sometimes you'll see bison there mm -hmm. but it's nice when you get to lake village you turn off the road and you'll pass the lake hotel which is a big 1920s hotel it's all yellow uh, and if you go just past that there's lake lodge which is where we like to stay that's where they have like cabins for rent and you just have a little cabin it's super tiny pretty affordable also and it's just a nice place to stay something this last time we went we woke up and right outside of our room was a whole like family of elk yeah. just like literally walking past the door first thing in the morning it was, it was pretty cool. So cool. So now for us personally, we this is where we like end our night. We've had dinner um, and then we go to bed. Yeah, yeah. So we usually, I mean, for us, we live close enough to Yellowstone that luckily we can just road trip it there first thing early in the morning. So we get there when the gate opens and this whole half of the lower loop up until Lake usually takes us until just past dinner time. And so we'll check into our cabin and we'll crash for the night. Because in Yellowstone, quite honestly, it's not a ton to do at night because it's every- It's dark. It's so, there's not lights. It's so dark. And you can't see the wildlife while it's so dark outside. So you might as well just go to bed and get an early start tomorrow. So first thing for us in the morning, after coffee, obviously, um, we like to get an early start and head right out to get to Hayden Valley. Hayden Valley is a beautiful sprawl where there's usually almost always tons of animals. You, we've seen uh, elk, bison, bear, uh, coyote, eagles. So like, it's such a beautiful place just on its own, but then it's filled with all of this amazing wildlife. But before we get to Hayden Valley, you have to pass one of the walks called Mud Volcano, which is one of my personal favorites. Mud Volcano is really cool. Uh, it, a lot of times when you go up on the walk, there will be buffalo up there, so you have to be really careful. Um, yes, let's take a moment and talk about wildlife safety. When you go to Yellowstone, these animals are wild. You have to stay away from them. I cannot tell you how many times we see people go like inches away from elk and bison because they think for some reason because they're herbivores they're like not dangerous they're dangerous people get gored by bison and elk so if there's a bison too close to a walk we will turn around and walk the other way people don't but please be safe <laughs> Let's assume there's a bison far enough away that you can go on the walk. Yes, there are usually bison at Mud Volcano. And it's fun because it's sort of split into two. There's the bottom half that has actually Mud Volcano. And then the top half is more of like large hot pots that are spread about. And another place where once you go up at the top, you get these gorgeous sweeping views of Hayden Valley. Mm -hmm. So when you leave Mud Volcano, you'll drive through Hayden Valley. Well, sometimes you attempt to drive through Hayden Valley. We have been stuck in herds of buffalo that just like will surround the cars. You can't move because they're as big as the car. Yeah, but and it's really cool. It's, it's, I mean, that's why you're there to see all those things. And just be safe, maybe roll the windows up. So once you've made it through Hayden Valley, you'll reach a turnoff for the Lower Falls. That's where you'll see the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and, and Artist Point. So this is another place where you see a lot of like the pictures of Yellowstone are of Artist Point. It's stunningly beautiful and you get to go out, I mean, essentially 
into the canyon on this little like ledge and it gives you this perfect view of the lower falls and the canyon. The scenery is mind boggling. We have we have photos of us at Artist Point that like it doesn't even look real. It's while you're there, it's just like, is that a real place that yeah, I'm looking it's at? It's crazy. It's so cool. And again, I do feel like that's a definite like must. Even if you don't hit all of the places that we're saying we love to visit. Obviously, like, Old Faithful and Artist Point, I feel like are... If you've never been, you have to. You have to see them. So once you're done at Artist Point and you take that perfect photo and you post it on your Instagram and everyone's like, Oh my god, I love it so much. And you're like, yeah, I just woke up like this. You turn back onto the loop and you find a hike that we love to do called the Brink of the Lower Falls. It's so much fun. So this hike will take you down to... The, the brink of the waterfall, so right where the river falls off of the edge. Yeah, there's a little like standing area that they've built that overlooks, I mean literally, over the waterfall. Yeah. It's so beautiful and so humbling to be next to this giant waterfall. It's a, it's a fairly easy walk. You might need to take a lot of breaks, if, especially if you're not used to the altitude. Then you might have a hard time, but it's not a difficult hike by any means. No. I just think the altitude gets people. Yeah, it's just a lot of little switchbacks. Yeah. Oh, well, this last time we did it, we saw a yellow-bellied marmot. Oh my gosh, it was so cool. It was so cute, just walking along. Yeah, so once you've left the brink, you're gonna take another right. Just that's your right of passage, I guess. <laughs> No. So you're going to take another right, and the next thing you're going to come to is a uh, canyon. And canyon is lodging. It's another visitor center, a really nice visitor center. And then they've also got a general store, a restaurant, another gift shop. Gas station. Gas station. Canyon's another one of those three places that's really developed in Yellowstone. Really great shopping. Uh, it's probably the gift shop we frequent the most yeah. to pick up. Yellowstone merchandise. They have quite a large selection there. Yeah. We have also stayed at Canyon before in a cabin again. Canyon has a lot of, it has like a couple big lodge houses that are essentially like hotels. And they also have cabins that you can stay into. The nice thing about staying at Canyon is it's right in the middle of those two loops. So it is a pretty convenient location for wherever you're going. We just prefer, so after you stop at Canyon Village, get yourself a souvenir, a mug. Then we usually head to Norris. So this is another place where rather than just turn right, we stay on the lower loop. So right now, if the loops are an eight, we're in the middle line. So we're gonna cut across that middle line. There's actually a really beautiful pull off that we usually like to do called Virginia Cascade on that. It's just a nice way to break up. There's not really a lot of things to see on that drive. So we love to stop at Virginia Cascades and it's a beautiful little drive next to a creek. You can sit and have lunch there. There's also on those little pull offs or drives, there's usually a lot fewer cars um, in those areas, so it's a little bit more secluded. So after Virginia Cascades, if you keep on going just past that, you'll hit Norris Junction. And Norris is a big geyser basin. Uh, fun fact, it's the hottest place in Yellowstone. Sometimes they have to move the walkways because people's shoes have melted. It is also home to the tallest geyser on the planet, Steamboat Geyser. Which we have been fortunate enough in our lifetime to have seen, which is crazy. Roll the footage. I'll never forget when it went off. We're in the middle of the wild, right? And someone from behind us just yells, RUN! <laughs> I thought there were wolves. I thought we were Bears. done. Yeah. Like, I'm looking around like, oh no. <laughs> but the geyser was going off. And everyone was very excited. We sat and watched that for like an, an hour. hour. It was so cool. It was also so cool to see how excited all of the rangers were to see it go because it's not predictable. So maybe you'll get lucky when you go and you'll get to see it too. So when you're at Norris Geyser Basin, it's split into two sections. And one is the porcelain basin and one is the back basin. 
The porcelain basin is, is much more popular. It's always where all the people go. It's also where Steamboat is. So once you leave Norris, you're gonna take another right and we're gonna go to Artist Paint Pots. This is another one of Thomas's favorites, I would say, because it has the mud pots, which he loves. They're so funny. <laughs> it's so funny to just watch like a pool of mud, like, I don't know. They tickle my funny bone. It's also just like a beautiful walk, but it's so much fun to watch those dang mud pots. So once we're all done at Artist Paint Pots, we leave and we turn left. Three for a loop. And then it's time for lunch. So we usually like to stop at a place called Gibbon Meadows. It's just a really nice picnic area there. We stop, have a nice picnic lunch. There's a little river that runs through it. A river runs through it. Oh, I thought was the joke. <laughs> After lunch, we head back out on the loop and we turn right. And then we drive down the road. You'll pass Barrel Spring, which you can stop and get out and look at if you want. And then the next place we usually stop is Gibbon Falls. It's a nice waterfall. The rock underneath it is all like black and then the water coming down is all white. So it's really pretty contrast. Yeah, Gibbon Falls is another really interesting feature geologically because the waterfall is the edge of the caldera and that's why it is that way. It's a really cool feature to see. And you can look out into the valley. It's so gorgeous. Yeah, very everything the light touches. Yeah. So now at this point, we've basically completed over the last two days, the entire lower loop. So what we usually do now is we backtrack and go back to Hayden Valley because it's usually on the way to our cabin for the night. And we love to go drive through Hayden Valley a couple times, animal watch, try to see what we can find. And then we usually just pull off to the side of the road and have dinner there. So day three, again, we're gonna get up early in the morning, make sure you beat everyone who is not inside the park. And we're gonna go back through Hayden Valley because that's how we get out of Lake. And once you get to Canyon, you're gonna continue straight. And this is gonna take you towards Tower and Roosevelt and Lamar Valley. It's a really pretty drive going through the mountains. They say it's a really good place to see grizzly bear. I saw a black bear once run across the road. Um, I haven't seen a grizzly on that specific part of the drive. Normally, if we're gonna see bears, we see them near Canyon. Mm -hmm. So up on that drive, there's lots of really good lookouts to pull off and see. Uh, and then when you get to Tower, definitely have to stop. But once you stop at Tower, it's a nice, easy little place to stop. There's a small gift shop. Uh, the law for me is ice cream mm -hmm. at Tower. I have to, to get, get ice, ice cream. cream. Jinx. And then you can go over and see Tower Falls. It's called that because of these large rock like spikes that come out of the waterfall at the top. After Tower, the next thing you're gonna come to is Roosevelt. There is a little, I think ranch, you can do like horseback rides if you want to. There's a petrified tree that we usually take a little walk to cause that's really cool. That's really all there is in Roosevelt. It's not super developed. Uh, there's not a ton of things to do there. If you turn right at Roosevelt Junction, you'll actually be on the road that takes you to the Northeast entrance of the park. And that's where Lamar Valley is. So Lamar Valley is again, similar to Hayden Valley. Another place where you can see lots of wildlife. They're usually like right off the road too. All of the bison. We've seen, what, antelope? Mm -hmm. um, it's also the best place they say for wolf watching. We have not personally seen wolf. I would love to see a wolf in Yellowstone. I've been going to Yellowstone my entire life and I still have never seen a wolf. If you've seen a wolf, congratulations, I'm very jealous. So if you choose to do Lamar Valley, you'll drive out to the Northeast entrance and then turn around and come right back to Roosevelt Junction. But this time you'll keep going straight. And if you didn't do Lamar, you just turn left at Roosevelt. Okay, so we have left Roosevelt or Lamar, whichever path you have chosen for yourself. And the next thing up is Mammoth. Mammoth is another like super developed area. There are people that actually live inside the park in Mammoth. There's lots of little houses, there's gift shops, there's a library. Um, there's always elk. Yes. Always elk. There are like permanent elk that live in Mammoth. Also at Mammoth, they have the Travertine terraces, which are really cool. You can walk up and uh, 
see like the water cascading down these terraces. Yeah, it's again really interesting because they create these little pools that then slowly overflow and create other pools that slowly overflow and create other pools. So you get like these stairs yeah. of pools flowing water down. Mammoth is a, is a really cool place to be. Leaving Mammoth, we're gonna head back towards Norris. This is one of my personal favorite drives. I think it's really cool. You're right up on the mountain. We even saw um, mountain goats one time yeah. on the side of the like cliff. It was so cool. There's a cool little pull off. You can stop and look at this really pretty waterfall mm -hmm. again. Um, and then the rest of the drive back to Norris is pretty like flat open fields, lots of like buffalo. Mm -hmm. Good opportunities for animal spotting. Yeah. And then at this point in the day, once we hit Norris Junction, we usually turn left again, because that's going to take us back towards Canyon and Lake. So we're winding down the day again by this point. We usually head through Hayden Valley, Animal Watch, have our dinner, and then call it a night at Lake. And that's typically how we spend our entire Yellowstone trip. That's our itinerary, the things we love to see. But like I said, there's so many pull-offs and things to see everywhere that if you want to take longer and do more, you absolutely can. Here's one of my biggest tips to your trip to Yellowstone. If you can, I would definitely stay in the park. You're just in the middle of everything and in the early mornings you're in the park before any of the gates have opened so you're gonna see everything with much fewer crowds around. So another tip that is one of my personal favorites is to bring your own food. The food inside of Yellowstone National Park is pretty expensive um, so we usually make like a potato salad, we bring stuff for sandwiches, and we bought this really thing a little while ago it's a car stove it plugs in what does it plug into plugs into the cigarette lighter you know when it's a cigarette lighter port but it's not a cigarette lighter port because it's 2023 so you just plug it into that i'm not a car person i don't know what that's called it will heat up food while you're driving so we've just gotten those little like the disposable, like the disposable bread, bread pans yeah. and um made like casseroles or like meatloaf one time um, we've done like chilies yeah we did shrimp and it'll just like heat your food up so you don't have to have sandwiches for dinner because you've probably had sandwiches for lunch yeah bringing your own food in a cooler with ice or like something you know to heat it up is such a great way to save money plus then you can pull off wherever you want and enjoy the scenery rather than only being able to eat your food at like Old Faithful or Canyon or any place that happens to have a restaurant. Next up is some do's and don'ts on what to pack for Yellowstone. So first thing you're going to want good shoes. Obviously you don't have to get out and do the walks, but if you're going to do the walks, you want to have good closed toed shoes to walk around in. Also make sure you bring comfortable clothes. This isn't necessarily, I feel like the place for Instagram. High fashion. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's not, I mean, it's Instagrammable, but not in like, hi, I'm a model moment. It's very much, you're walking, you're driving. Wear something you're comfortable in all day. Next up, you definitely want a warm layer. It gets really cold in Yellowstone really fast. It can snow almost all year long. So make sure you have something warm to put on layers. Think layers. And then definitely a jacket because you can get caught in like rain or sometimes snow with very little warming. I've had a snowball fights on the 4th of July in Yellowstone. Something else to bring if you are fair skinned like us uh, is sunscreen. You are at a really high altitude and the sun is really intense there. So I would make sure for sure you put on sunscreen. Yeah, it's not hot, but the sun will still get you. Next thing is you're probably going to want some bug repellent. You are out in nature, so there are bugs there. If you don't want them to eat you alive, something to repel them. Next up is a must have, in my opinion, a good set of binoculars. Oh yeah. Like we said, I think most of the reason you're there is to soak in nature, see the wildlife. We love just pulling off to the side of the road and just pull out those binoculars and just look. Mm -hmm. Just look. One of our favorite pastimes. Another thing you're gonna want to have handy, something we all have in our pockets every day, what are those? is a camera or your phone, because you're definitely gonna want to take pictures. It's beautiful. There's lots of wildlife, like we've said. 
You're gonna wanna take pictures. Mm -hmm. On the same note as sunscreen, bring sunglasses. The sun is so intense. Also, there's so much water on the ground with Yellowstone Lake and the hot pots and like everything. There's so much water around reflecting the light back at you. Get a good pair of sunglasses and bring a good pair of sunglasses. My last packing tip is actually a don't. This may seem wrong to most of you if you haven't been to Yellowstone. Don't bring a hat. Don't bring a hat. It is so windy. <laughs> so windy it's, no one tells you it's always windy and in fact we've seen other videos talking about yellowstone saying you have to bring a hat to help with sun protection but if you wear sunblock like you'll be fine unless that hat is like strongly attached to your head somehow or you got it cinched under your chin yeah there's a good chance you're gonna lose it i've seen many people lose a hat don't bring a hat yeah no hats so that's how we like to spend our time in yellowstone we hope this video helped if you're planning a trip to yellowstone soon make sure to take your time and enjoy yes. it so until next time keep, keep on exploring, exploring.